in this module, we're going to use and configure a communication peripheral. So in this case, a UART. So what we're going to do is to use the printf debugging using a UART. The objective of this lab is to redirect the printf output to the LP UART of the SM32 G0, which is connected to the ST-Link virtual com port on your nuclear board. So using a terminal, you know, like TerraTerm, we're going to view the printf outputs. So PA2 and PA3 of the STM32 G0 are actually, so can be configured as alternate function for LPUART1, and they are connected to the ST-Link, so which is located on top of your nuclear board, and that's what we're going to use. So we're going to redirect the printf using the virtual com port of the ST-Link on your nuclear board. In this table, we highlight the differences between the different USART of the STM32. So as you can see, the USART 1 and 2 are the most advanced one because they support all the features listed here. Whereas the LP UART, so which is the low power UART, doesn't support, you know, for example, the synchronous mode, the IRDA or the lead mode. But we'll see that it has some good features to work in low power modes. The LPUART can operate in FIFO mode, which is enabled or disabled by software. The LPUART comes with a transmit FIFO, which is TX FIFO, and a receive FIFO, RX FIFO, each eight data deep. The TX FIFO is nine bit wide, the RX FIFO is 12 bit wide. Why 12 bit? Because on top of storing the data, we also store some error flags associated to each character, like parity error, noise error, framing error. So provided that the TX54 and RX54 are clocked by the kernel clock, it is possible to transmit and receive data even in stop mode. It is possible to configure TX54 and RX54 thresholds used mainly to avoid underrun, overrun issues while waking up from stop mode. The low power universal asynchronous receiver transmitter provides a full UART communication at 9600 baud. So when the LP UART is clocked using the LSE, which is the low speed external 32 kHz crystal. Higher baud rates can be reached when it is clocked by clock sources different than the LSE. Applications can benefit from the easy and inexpensive connection between devices requiring only a few pins. In addition, the LPUART peripheral is functional in low power modes. It comes with transmit and receive FIFOs that we presented before with capability to transmit and receive in stop modes. This is the LPUART block diagram. The LPUART clock source can be the APB clock PCK, the system clock, so sys clock, the high speed internal 16 MHz oscillator, HSI 16, or the LSE which is the low speed external oscillator. The LP UART clock is then divided by a prescaler, so a value 1 to 256. TX and RX pins are used for data transmission and reception. NCTS and NRTS pins are used for RS-232 hardware flow control. The driver enable pin, so DE, which is available on the same IO as NRTS, is used in the RS-485 mode. Now time for the lab. So we're going to create a new project in STM32 CubeMX. So we're going to start from scratch. So you can click on the home button right here. And then we're going to start from scratch, you know, selecting access to MCU selector. And uh, from here in the search window located right there, we're going to search for STM32 G0 71RB. And once we have the selection, we're going to double click on STM32G071RBTX. In STM32 CubeMX, so I'm going to click on Home to get back you know, to the home page of STM32 CubeMX. And now click on Access to MCU Selector. Save my project from before. In the new project window, I'm going to type STM32. G071RB. Okay, and here, so I'm going to expand it a little bit to make sure I'm selecting the RBTX right here. 
now in the pinout and configuration tab, I'm going to expand connectivity first and then select LPUART1. In the configuration for LPUART1, we're going to select the asynchronous mode right here. So once we select it, this is going to select by default PC0 and PC1 for LPUART1 attendant functions. But because on the board that we have, it's PA2 and PA3 that are connected, you know, to the ST-Link virtual com ports. So we're going to have to remap, you know, the PC0 and PC1 to PA2 and PA3. Okay, so I'm going to expand connectivity and click on LPUART1. Now for the mode, I'm going to select asynchronous mode. So this selects PC0 and PC1 by default that we're going to remap to PA2 and PA3. Okay, and now I'm going to remap. Remember the control and hold and then drag and drop. So now I have PA2 and PA3 that are configured for LPU at one attendant functions as we want. Now we're going to select uh, the clock configuration. So you're going to go into clock configuration tab and we want to run the microcontroller at 64 megahertz. So to do this in the HLK uh, tab right here, you're going to enter 64 for 64 megahertz and then enter. So that will select 64 megahertz for the microcontroller and also 64 megahertz for the U LPUART one. So we're going to click on clock configuration and we're going to enter 64 megahertz, which is the maximum clock configuration. So we're going to let the tool find the solution. So here we are running from the HSI with the PLL. And we have also for LPU at one, 64 megahertz from the PCLK, so from the, the APB clock. Now we're going to configure the LPU at one. So to do this, we're going to go back to the configuration tab select the LPU at one. And then in the configuration uh, window, we are going to click on parameter settings and enter the following uh, parameters. So for the baud rate, 115,200. For the word length, we're going to enter eight for eight bits. Parity, so we'll have none. And one bit for stop. So I'm going back now to the pinout and configuration tab in the configuration window of the LPU at one, we're going to select 115, 200. For the word length, we're going to enter eight bits, parity none, and for the stop bits one. Okay, so we are all set now. Now in the project manager, we're going to enter the name of the project, so like printf, for example. We're going to generate it in the same location we did before or another location of your choice. And select MDK ARM v5 for the ID. So once we have inserted all of these parameters, we're going to click on generate projects. And then from the new code generation window, we're going to click on open project to open our project. So now I'm going to enter project manager tab, give a name to the project like printf. So location is okay. I'm going to keep it like this and select MDK arm v5 for the ID. Now I can click on generate code. And then I'm going to click on open project. Now it's time to add some code to redirect the printf function to do this. There is different piece of code that we're going to add. So the first uh, thing we're going to add is include of stdio.h library. Then we're going to add a put car, you know, prototype function in this section. And the third code to be added will be the redirection function using the UART. The code to be added is in the description of the video. So please go to the description or in the comments and you know copy and paste the different piece of code that you will need so you will need this so they include stdio then this function put char prototype and then the redirection 
for the, the function itself. Car in Microvision 5, so in my uh, project that was just created, the printf project, I'm going to expand the application and user, double click on you know, like main.c, and here we're going to add our first code, so which is include the stdio library.h, so include stdio.h. Now in the pfp section, right here, or another one, huh? but just as an example, we're going to add this prototype function. So same thing, the code can be found in the description of the video. So you can just copy it and paste it or enter it, you know, manually. There's not so much code to be added here. Now in our while loop, we're going to add a code, so application code to, you know, use the printf function. So just add, you know, like a printf, hello world, the typical hello world with a delay of one second. So what we want to do is to display hello world every second, you know, on our terminal. So let's add this code. Let's add the code for the application inside the while loop. So the printf every second. Okay. Save this. Now we can build the project. So project build target. Then enter the debug session, run the code, and we can open a terminal, you know, software like Terterm. So that's the one uh, we can use. Connect to the ST-Link virtual com port with the following settings. So the same settings that we use for LPUART configuration. So 115, uh, 200 bow or like bits per second, then eight bits for data, no parity, one bit for stop. Then we should see displayed hello world every seconds on our terminal software. So let's check this out. Let's build the project. So build button, remember, or L7. The code built successfully. Now we can enter debug session, debug, start debug. We can now run the code. So using the run button right here. Or F5. Now I'm going to open TerraTerm. So right here, double click on it. I'm going to connect to the COM port associated to the STLing virtual COM port. So by clicking serial and selecting so this one. And then OK. Now I'm going to configure the serial port to be 100, 15, 200, 8, 0, 1. And now I see the hello world messages that are being displayed correctly on our Terraterm 